Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Dorina Burton here. We are making a pasta sauce today. I'm just sitting, seating. <laughs> Let's try that again. I'm just sitting here for a minute before we get started. Hi, Cindy. Nice to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I'm just having my matcha latte that I make all the time. And if you guys want a tip on how to make that, just hop over to my site. I have a post on making it. It was years ago I made it with cashew milk, but now I make it with oat milk because oat milk wasn't like on the market then. But that's how I like to make it now with matcha and oat milk. And I'm having some midday square, which uh, I actually haven't had for a while. We were out and um, really enjoying having a little nibble of that. That's the one I like right now. Mm. And I have a link for that. I'm going to add it to the chat here because I don't know if I put it in the description. Um, if you're liking those bars and you want to order them, you can get 15% off with my code. Okay, so make sure you get your 15% discount. <laughs> so I just added that to the um, chat. And that discount used to only be a one-time thing, and now it's every order. So make sure you get that. And today's episode is brought to you by mm -hmm, Dorina's Kind Kitchen, and we're going to do a giveaway um, for that book. I forgot to draw a winner from my last chat, so I will do that after and go on and, and comment. So the way you'll be notified of whether you win is in the comments. So I haven't been on here for a while, right, guys? It's been, it's been a beat since I've been here. And... Um, yeah, a lot going on, but um, we're doing okay. And so I wanted to hop on today and make this sweet potato pasta sauce because I don't think a lot of you know about this recipe. It's not in my books. Um, I put it, I think it might be in the diabetes cookbook. I'm not sure. I can't remember, but it's on my site. So the link is up in the description. So this is a great pasta sauce for you guys if you need a tomato free pasta sauce, right? Like I get that question a lot. What can I cook my pasta? Like what kind of sauce can I use for a tomato free pasta? And maybe you need a nut free pasta sauce, right? Because we have lots of like creamy pasta sauces using cashews and almonds and they're all delicious, but maybe you need a nut free pasta sauce. This is one for you. And I think you'll love it. It's really easy. The only thing you need to do is cook your sweet potatoes in advance. And we all do that now, right? Everyone's doing that? Hands up. Are you all batch cooking sweet potatoes? Please tell me you are. <laughs> I'm gonna lecture you now. I hope you're all cooking your sweet potatoes in batches. So I did a small batch today because this is all that I have on hand because you know we go through a lot of sweet potatoes. So this is how I bake them. I just put them on a parchment um, lined baking sheet and a lot of times I just use my toaster oven because it heats up really quickly and it cooks them really quickly. I will get these baked up. These are not huge ones. So this size, you know, these smaller size sweet spuds, and these are the orange sweet potatoes, sometimes called garnet or jewel yams in Canada, in the States. They're not called that. Nope. They're just called sweet potatoes. And these are the orange ones. Um, they cook in about a half hour, like 30, 40 minutes at about 400. You could boost up the heat a little bit, 425, cook them a bit quicker. And I definitely prefer baking them whole and getting the good caramelized flavor. I know some of you guys love to put them in the Instant Pot. That's cool. Go for it. Um, and I'll do that in the summer when it's really hot. But for best flavor, you want to roast them. They also don't get watery. So sometimes that changes consistency if you're using them in baking, if you're steaming them, boiling them. Um, I don't think we need to boil them, right? No, steaming them or... Um, baking them, the baked flavor is better and you don't get them too like moisture, uh, like soggy, right? They, they cook in their own moisture and juices rather than getting steamed and extra water getting added to them. Okay, so that's that. These are my sweet spots and we're going to get started and make this. That means I got to stand up. <sighs> Hang on, guys. <laughs> been on my feet all morning cooking cleaning so hang on all right get my butt up get my butt up all right so 
I already have some pasta cooked. I'm making this for supper. So I made a little bit of pasta so that I can just show you this sauce and not have it like overcooked. So um, to make the sauce, we are starting with the sweet potatoes. You can prep your pasta while you're making the sauce, right? So you can have your water boiling, get your pasta cooking, takes usually, you know, seven, eight minutes, depending on the type of pasta. If it's brown rice, it takes longer. I'm using whole wheat spaghetti. And this is one from Whole Foods, which I've been able to go down over the border and get groceries. I'm so happy I can do that. Because you know what? Unfortunately, I don't want to say it because it's not so nice for Canadians, but the products are often better there. They are. The U.S. products are better and cheaper. Um, even with the exchange rate, whole wheat pasta is cheaper, organic whole wheat pasta, and the produce is much more available, like uh, abundant and available. That's all. It's a shame. I don't know why, because we're so close to Washington border and we don't get the same kind of produce, organic produce and quality um, at the prices. So anyways, that's just a, a, a sidebar. So let's get to this because I'm already going off topic. So you know what's going to happen. Um, and I'm just looking at um, quickly comments. Uh, oh no, <laughs> YouTube showed my video as being 11.45 p.m. Oh well, <laughs> some people may be tuning in at midnight. <laughs> Sorry about that. You know what, I'm just getting back to this. So uh, boy, oh boy, there's a lot going on here this morning. I'll just say that. Okay, so it's two cups of the, let's get this down here, of the sweet potato. And people ask me how I measure it, right? Like if I say two cups of sweet potato, this is literally what I do. I take off the skins like this. Usually the dog comes running for these. He can smell it from the other room when I'm peeling a sweet potato. I kid you not, I start peeling it and he runs in. Uh, it's amazing. And I just piece it off like that and measure the cup. That's it. One cup. And then I do it again, just kind of break it up like that. So I don't cube it. I don't even cut it. I just literally break it up. And I do the same when I'm measuring... Something just swooped by my window and it was huge. It looked like a big, big eagle or something. But I, it was probably a crow, a massive crow. I saw a coyote cross our street yesterday. It was so cool. I know people are afraid of coyotes, but my gosh, it is, it was such a beautiful animal. Like I just, it's crossed our street and it saw me as I was driving and it got startled. And then it just kept running through someone's driveway. Was he ever gorgeous or she? I don't know. There we go. I'll have to save that for Ollie. So there's the sweet potato, two cups. It was gorgeous though. I mean, I don't know. He was a beautiful, beautiful animal. Anyhow, sweet potato, two cups, lemon juice and tahini. The recipe's on my site, guys, so I don't need to really give you the measures, but it's a tablespoon of lemon juice and two tablespoons of tahini. I use tahini to make it nut free. If you want to use nut butter, go for it. You could use... Um, a raw cashew butter would be really nice or a raw almond butter. Um, so if you want to do that, you can. Dishwasher's beeping. And then a tablespoon of tahini. No, that wasn't tahini. That was miso. A tablespoon of miso, salt, smoked paprika, and black pepper. Guys, smoked paprika is like a game changer if you're just using paprika. So go find some. <laughs> <laughs> go to your store and find some, order it online. You won't go back to paprika, okay? Um, what else do I need here? Oh, garlic. I didn't get my garlic. Okay, so I've got a couple of cloves of garlic. Um, and you know, so the garlic in this is not being cooked. So if you're, because the sauce is just going to be warmed through with the pasta, it's not going to be cooked. So if you're garlic shy, maybe use one clove. If you love garlic, then, you know, use two large cloves. This is a strong garlic that I bought. It's a red garlic. And so I'm just using one big one because I know it's got some like punch to it. Oh, a little bit of nutmeg. Um, so the nutmeg is kind of, you know, I know it's unusual because it's a sweeter spice. And, but you see it in pasta recipes and I use it in my fettuccine as well. Like just a touch, just a pinch of it. And you go, hmm. What is that in there? And that's what it does. It adds just a little something. And I use my kitchen rasp and just, just grate a tiny bit into the pasta. 
not a lot. You're not making cookies, right? So it's just, just like a pinch. And thyme leaves. I have thyme growing in the garden. So I just had Paul, my husband, run out and get some. And I'm, it's a tablespoon, but I'm not really measuring. I'm just taking it off the, the thicker portion of the stalk. So to get the leaves, you know, you got these tender, tender stalks up here, and then you've got this thicker portion of the stalk down here. So what I do is I just run my fingers from the base that's thick up to the top, and that will strip off the leaves. And then you get a little bit of the tender part of the leaves, but that's okay because it's not like fibrous. It's really, really delicate. So you can put that right in there. Okay. So there's your tip. Start at the base of the where it's thick and, and tough, and then you've got your yeah and the thyme is really nice in there so i wouldn't you know i wouldn't use dried thyme in this i'd say if you don't have fresh thyme then sub in fresh basil might be nice or just omit it because it really works with the fresh thyme in this and using dry because we're not cooking the sauce it's not going to have the same effect in flavor so i just wouldn't use dried that's it wouldn't use dried. You could also use dried rosemary or sorry, fresh rosemary, but maybe like less, a lot less, like maybe a teaspoon because fresh rosemary, it's beautiful, but it's quite strong. So I wouldn't use a tablespoon of fresh rosemary in here. It would just be too overpowering. I'd go with like maybe a teaspoon. So that's a cup of water. I'm going to add another cup, but I'm going to blitz this first. <laughs> already so lovely that smells good look at that mm, beautiful I feel like I'm missing something no I added the lemon juice miso tahini yeah okay and um now I'm gonna add a little more water and blitz it again <laughs> sure that that clove of garlic gets well blended look at that guys isn't that pretty and it it smells beautiful honestly it smells so good so then we're going to mix some of this with the pasta that i have cooked and literally just heating it with the pasta so i'm just going to add a bit and i'm going to show you because again i'm going to cook a bigger amount for dinner tonight but i just wanted to show you guys this today so I'm just going to heat this up over the stove for a minute. And then the topping is made with, so you know, like, you know, like um, in restaurants, they often finish something nicely, right? You always have like a little finish on a pasta. And so that's all this is, is something to finish and make it a little nicer. It also tastes better and it gives a textural um, component. So when you're having pasta, it's soft, it's squishy, the soft, the sauce is creamy. So it's all kind of the same, right? So when you add a little topping, this gives it a bit of a crunch, some texture, additional flavor. So it's really quite nice to add. It's not essential, but I highly recommend it. And it really only takes like an extra couple of minutes to prep. So it's a breadcrumb topping. Now, normally, if you have a breadcrumb topping with pasta, oil will be added to it, right? To give it flavor and make it crispy. We're not adding oil. Instead, we're adding either almond meal or I use pumpkin um, meal, just ground pumpkin seeds today. So that helps add that like fatty kind of texture quality to the breadcrumbs to make them more sumptuous, like, mm, 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 right? You wanted to have that like mouth feel. So you could also use a little bit of nut butter and work it through the breadcrumbs, like with your hands, massage through some um, nut butter. But it's a lot easier to me to just use like almond meal with the breadcrumbs, or in this case, I use pumpkins, pumpkin meal, pumpkin seed meal, not, not pumpkin, the orange pumpkin, but the seeds. <laughs> So again, I'm making it nut free, right? So you can use the pumpkin seed meal to make it um, nut free. Just have to check that pasta, hang on. Where are my tongs? I'm always looking for things in my kitchen, hang on. 
Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Okay, so just warming through here. And uh, a little smoked paprika also gets added to the breadcrumbs. So it's breadcrumbs, the pumpkin seed meal, which you can kind of see there because it's a little greenish. Can you see that, guys? And then some salt. So it's salt, smoked paprika, um, any breadcrumb you want to use, and which can be gluten-free. And you can also use gluten-free pasta. And then the seed or nut meal. And you toast it up. And you really have to watch it because whenever you toast breadcrumbs or nuts, they burn really quickly. So put it on a, a, like a heat of maybe about 375 and watch it from about, once it gets to about seven minutes, you need to move it around, right? Get the outer edges to the inside and move that around because the edges will burn. You can see I've got a little bit of burning around the edges. You can just kind of discard that, move any pieces that get really too, too browned up. But this is your topping and it's nice and like crunchy, okay? Oh, and I make my own breadcrumbs because, as you know, in any good household, people don't want to eat the heels of bread, right? Or do you? I like the heels of bread. I don't eat a lot of bread, but sometimes I like toasting a little heel of bread in the nighttime and adding some jam to it or something. But most homes, right, people <laughs> leave the heels of bread. So what I do is I collect them. Once you have like five bags of bread in my fridge with just heels in it, I take the heels out and I either make the breadcrumbs right away and store them in the freezer or just stick the heels in the freezer and then pulse them after. You can also make croutons with them, right? So you can cut them into croutons, put them in the freezer. Lots of tips here, guys. But I took a couple of heels out of the fridge today and I just blitz them in my mini processor. And I love this. I love this. I use it all the time. It's an attachment to my immersion blender, like so. And I have an Amazon link there to the model that I have, which it's probably a newer model now. I've had this one about, I think I've had this one about eight years and it's still working really well. So there's that, okay? I don't have a discount code on that. Sorry, it's just on Amazon. However, if you do want a blend tech, that I've got a discount code for. <laughs> okay, it's 20% off and it's yay dash blendtech in caps, yay hyphen blendtech. And you can get anything. If you want to get the twister jar, the um, smaller wild side jar, another jar, anything is 20% off. Um, and if you don't have a high speed blender, guys, I mean, it's a great investment to have that in your life to make, you know, great plant-based sauces, puddings, smoothies, you know, nut butters, all kinds of things. Okay, so I have got the pasta. Hang on. And I have these little bowls. I know we do a lot of like shopping for kitchenware. We're very simple here. <laughs> we use jars, nut jars for cups. Like we reuse our nut jars and that's what we use for cups all the time. But I saw these little bowls and I love them so much. And I like the texture and they're not glass so they don't break. So I really like them. Anyhow, boy, I'm just all over the place today, aren't I? So then you take your pasta. I'm going to see if I can make it look like fancier, like a restaurant. I really probably cannot, but let's see what I can do. Hmm. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Anyways, Martha's not coming, right? As I always say, Martha is not coming to dinner. Unless she one day finds my books and really loves them and wants to surprise me. But you can kind of twirl it with tongs and make it look a little nice like they do in restaurants and serve it that way. And then what really makes it look nice though is the sprinkle. So then we add the sprinkle like so. And then what I also like to do is take a little extra thyme leaves, just take a few off, break them up a little bit, and just put that over the top. Oh, what else is really nice is a lemon zest, if you have it. Get your lemon and get the zest that you have, your kitchen rasp, and there we go. Let's clean it up a bit. Let's clean it up a little bit like they do in restaurants so it doesn't look at least so messy. 
It's not fancy, but let's make it look not messy. Unlike the rest of my home. Because I'm telling you guys, these kids do not clean up well. No. Their rooms. I just close the doors now because I don't want to see what's in there. Okay, so here we go. Now, isn't that nice? It's got the little crunch with the past or the uh, breadcrumb topping. It smells absolutely delicious. And it smells delicious mostly because of the fresh ingredients using fresh thyme, the smoked paprika, and sweet potato. Like just really natural foods, right? Really good natural foods. So there's your pasta. And that will be our dinner. Mm -mm -mm. It smells delicioso. So the recipe link is up there for you, as well as some other links that I talked about today. And um, thank you for tuning in instead of midnight. I'm really happy that you joined <laughs> this morning instead of midnight. Oh, Lordy. And let's find a way for you guys to enter my giveaway. So let's see. Okay. I'm just going to ask a couple of questions and you can answer. Have you made this pasta sauce? I don't think a lot of you have. So have you tried the pasta sauce? And if so, do you really love it? <laughs> I hope so. I <laughs> hope your answer is not going to be no. <laughs> Or, uh, let's see, what else could I ask you? Do you batch cook sweet potatoes, okay? Have you tried the pasta sauce? Do you batch cook sweet potatoes? Are you going to batch cook sweet potatoes? Because now I want you to, okay? And batch cook your regular potatoes. And you can, um, that's your entry for a copy of Drina's Kind Kitchen. By the way, guys, this book now is $16 on Amazon and has 400 Five star review, well, average of five star reviews. So I'm quite happy with that and very grateful to all of you who have left a review. Um, if you want to leave a review, please hop over and do so. Amazon.com. I will add a link. I don't have a link there for the book, but I'll add a link later. Okay, so that's it, guys. Um, oh, and Nick's saying she tried the pad thai and it was so good. Thank you. That recipe is also on the site, guys. So you can pop over and do that. Make sure you comment. Last thing, make sure you comment after the video is completed. So go back to YouTube and comment in the comment stream after so that the comments, I will see them and be able to draw a winner. Okay, that's it. See you guys. Have a good day and um, enjoy some chocolate, okay? Because I said so. Or chocolate ice cream. That works too. Okay, bye.